thank you all for coming. Um, my name is Alex Webb. I'm here representing GridPoint. And luckily, I got chosen to speak on some of my favorite topics. I'm going to be speaking about Ecto Query, Postgres, and the Fragment macro. I call it Fragment Ecto Query's underrated super weapon. Um, OK, a little bit about me. I've been doing professional development for about 10 years, um, net latest with GridPoint. Um, <clears throat> Uh, my non-work life, I will my traditional. I have three stepkids and a bunch of pets. Um, my tech biases are I'm a, a biased for, towards dry and against boilerplate um, or FP and composable. I mean, that's probably like an easy sell in this room, but those are my biases. I also unironically love Postgres, just like I'm just a total fanboy. So as you can see, that's why I chose to put this talk together. Um, and everyone chooses to come, so it's, I, it's really all your fault. <laughs> so hopefully either I can spread my, my enthusiasm or at least we can start a flame war. All right. In fact, here are my spicy takes. Postgres, no, spicy take number one, Postgres is the best data store. And I'll back that up Woo! later. <laughs> uh, spicy take two, Ecto Query is the best query builder. I'll, I'll back that up later too. And then... At the very end, I'll show how we can use Fragment to combine the best qualities of both. All right, so why is Postgres the best? Well, um, aside from just being like well-documented and powerful and like reliable and robust, um, you can also, it can do everything any other data store can do, which is kind of amazing to me. So for instance, you can replace any graph database like Neo, Neo4j, Neptune, Narengo, with Postgres, uh, because with recursive CTEs, you can do efficient graph traversal. So that there's one thing. If you had a graph something, you used to have to have a graph database. Now you could just use Postgres. Um, you can replace Oracle. Everyone who's ever replaced Oracle has used Postgres, as far as I know. And uh, the best part about that is you don't have to sacrifice your firstborn to pay for Oracle. So <laughs> um, then, OK, and then also, this is the part we're really going to dial in on, because I had to take a really thin slice. But um, you can replace a document database with Postgres, because it natively supports um, anything you'd really want to do with documents. You can turn rows into a document. You can store documents in rows. You can index them. You can query them, slice and dice, put them all back together. So that's, that's my pitch. So we're going to show how we're going to take Ecto Query, we're going to take Postgres, and then with Fragment, that's how we're going to unlock some of those document capabilities, because they're not built into Ecto. Um, OK, so here we go. Oh. oh, yeah, this is kind of a side argument. Um, if you're not convinced that Postgres is the best, I, I argue that each additional database more improves your chance of outage by more than just, it's not just this one plus this one. It's they could, this one could fail, this one could fail. They could both fail at the same time. They could have a docu an undocumented interaction that causes them both to fail. Like Your probabilities go up more than linearly as you add systems, especially persistent systems. OK, all right, back to here's why Ecto Query is the best query builder. So um, are you, it has better magic. Um, you can always write. Oh, so the magic in lots of other languages is not extensible, right? But in Elixir, you can always write a macro upstream because of the way expansion works. You can write a macro, and then it'll expand to another macro, and then that just works like magic. But it's better magic because you have all the control. It's like a pre-compile hook. You can be like, if you're going to compile this Ecto query, well, first do all my stuff and then do that. And then, so that's awesome. Um, and then another thing that's better about the magic is the macros just generate an Ecto query struct. So you do all that from blah, 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 blah. And it comes out is just a regular struct. You can pass around. You, can, you could even store it. Um, OK. <sighs> and then I'm going to show something I really like. I don't know if I've seen it documented, but I'm going to show this composable joins pattern, which I think is amazing. So basically, the idea you can, you can build um, individual, like each table has its own function. And then you can say, like, OK, I want to build a query with all these tables. Let's do base query with this other function, with this other function, and then it all comes out together. So I think, yeah, I skipped around a little bit. Um, I'm going to say this is some more of my arguments why it's the best query builder. Um, it's better than an ORM because you have complete control of the mapping. Um, and there's, it never, an ORM can do things where it will like prefetch nested associations for you. Like Ecto will never do that. So. That's a super cool thing. Um, OK. Uh, 
All right. So here's the schema for the example I'm going to do. So this just has seven tables. Um, these five, like regular. Oh, crap. You can't see my mouse. That's no good. OK. There we go. This is hard. All right. <laughs> these five tables are just your basic operations. So because it's me and I'm a big nerd, um, I made this little space logistics example. So we're a logistics company. We have shipyards. And we might have starships docked at our shipyard. Um, employees also are assigned to a shipyard. Then sh ships are made of components. And components, uh, work orders are grouped with components. And employees are assigned to work orders. So these two joint tables, and then these have kind of like normal business objects. So here's the example I wanted to give. So this is kind of, this is documenting my, what I really love, this composable joins pattern. So what you can see here is each one of these function heads is built around its own table. So we start here, we say, OK, I just want to get the shipyards that match this substring by name. So that's easy enough. Um, so I write the query. All right, then I return a query out of this function. Then that query passes an input to this function. So I say from query, blah, 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 blah. Um, the magic happens when we do as here. Um, what as does is it allows us to reference the foreign table across. Even though like, at, when it's expanding this macro at expansion time, you know, it doesn't know what the shipyard is. But when the query gets all put together and executed, it all just works. And I'll show you that in a second. Um, then just the rest of this. We're doing, um, I'll zoom in here. <laughs> OK, so we're just going to get the name, the employee. The whole, the whole point of this overall is to get the, the name of the employee, the name of the shipyard, and how many they have. So hopefully that's straightforward enough. So we're going to build the query out of the different parts, and then we can see the result. So what I really want to emphasize is how even though we built it out of composable pieces, that doesn't show up in the end query. So we don't see like weird like subqueries, like this subquery, then this subquery, then join them all together. Actually, Ecto actually flattens it into the normal flat query like you would write yourself. Almost, I think of it as like almost hand optimized. Um, in fact, Ecto query does have an actual optimizer module. So it does some cool stuff. Um, OK. So that's the query. That's the output. Um, that's super exciting to me that you can um, compose those queries and put them together. So that's something I, uh, that's a pattern I use all the time. OK. Wow. All right. I used, I had an extra slide in there. So, and this, the whole point of this talk was fragment, right? So let's get to that. So I had to kind of cover a little bit of, of ground here. But now we're finally on to the fragment section of the talk. So. Um, before we dive in, something like we don't have to use Fragment because EctoQuery is al already powerful enough in all these areas. So if we're doing basic selects, updates, and deletes, we'll get everything will work just how we expect. You can even do subqueries with lateral joins or recursive CTEs, all with native EctoQuery and not having to use Fragment at all. So that's pretty powerful. But then when, like I said, if you want to use like a document functionality in Postgres, we'll need Fragment because that's not built into Ecto. So here's my fragment example. Um, you'll notice it's not in Elixir. That is um, <laughs> the dishonest answer for why that is, is because, oh, I can show it so much easier here in the SQL. I can show what's going on. The honest answer is I ran, I ran out of time to develop it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the laugh, y'all. <laughs> OK. So here's, so I, this, is, um, this is a pretty small and contrived example, but I think it really shows off the power of what you can do when you start thinking in this document-oriented way. And again, this is just a sub-slice of what you can do with Postgres Ecto Fragment. But, this, but you do have to use Fragment to access this functionality. So if we were going to translate this into an Ecto query, all this stuff is, most of this is pretty straightforward, but these lines here, these would have to be wrapped in Fragment. Um, so we would say, <clears throat> so what I'm able to do here is, oh, I need to, the purpose of the example or the objective, what we're trying to solve is, OK, we've got these 
starships and components. And we want to know what they have a associated JSON. Again, this is uh, some information I left off earlier. But they have an associated JSON, and they might be marked as damaged. So that's something that we can't, we can't out access associated JSON straight with, um, straight with Ecto. So what we're going to do is, where? JSON B. OK. I appreciate your patience, everyone. <sighs> Okay, so I guess the the contrive or the um, the thing I really wanted to show with this example is we're actually treating the table itself as part of the row. So we're actually putting the table name in here. If you can see, oh, I bled off the edge. Oh, right here on the second line. Ooh. <laughs> okay. So we see we put the table name here. So this is something you can do in a document context. That you can't really do if you're thinking in tables. You can say I can just take the table name. I'm going to call this shipyard or starships, shipyards. Oh my god. I messed that up. Sorry friends. <laughs> I put shipyards when I meant to put something else. Okay. So then what we're going to do here is we have um, we can put the actual name of the table in the document and that allows us to do something cool with this union query. Now we can query across two tables and now it looks like we just have a flat list of documents. But if we try to query across two tables with heterogeneous columns in a normal circumstance before like documentizing it, then Postgres would be like, no, a union has to have the same columns. But now we can just say, no, just make it a document, and then I don't care what you do, just make me a bunch of documents under these criteria. And then I'll just take the, I'll just tag every document with the table name it came from. So then I can say, okay, now I've got this heterogeneous collection of documents. So the example result in this case it looks like this. So we see we have the, the damaged metadata. Where's my mouse? There we go. We have the damaged metadata and the, the table name, which is incorrect. <laughs> um, so that's a, let's see. Oh, boy. All right. Well, friends, that is the end of my content. I skipped over some things, and I really appreciate your patience. Um, I did leave lots of time for q and I don't know if I'm going to, what questions we have available. Um, but I thank you, everyone, for your time. I thank you for your laughs. Um, that's, that's what I got. Thanks.